Hi everyone, I'm Robbie Calvo. Welcome to Maximize Helix. In this video, I'll be taking you through the Helix looper controls, where to place the looper in your signal chain, and showing you how to plan and execute the perfect loop. Okay, let's take a look at the six switches and what each one of them does within the looper. Rehearse your first guitar part, tapping your foot near the engage switch. Now you're in record mode. Now you're out of record mode and in playback. Rehearse second guitar part, tap foot near the switch. Now you're recording the second guitar part. Now both are playing back. The next switch over is the stop and play switch. The next switch over from that will play that loop back at half the speed, but if you record with it in half speed, you'll actually get double the record time. So really handy for when you're playing or recording 12 bar blues, for example. This is the reverse, so you can actually reverse the loop or play it forwards. The next switch up is the undo, so the last guitar part, this will undo that guitar part. And then the once switch, this will just play the loop once. Place the looper at the end of your signal chain before the volume pedal. This will allow you to record any of the effects that are placed before the looper. You'll also be able to add effects to your current sound without affecting the playback of the loop. For example, adding a delay or overdrive to your lead guitar sound while playing over a rhythm guitar loop. You saw me add delay and overdrive to my performances during the intro video. You can also adjust the playback volume of the recorded loop. I like to lower the playback volume by two decibels so that my live parts are always a touch louder and obviously adjust this to your personal taste. Placing the looper before the volume pedal in the signal chain allows you to fade the loop in and out, which is a really nice touch in a live situation. It's imperative to know what you're going to loop before trying to capture it. Create and rehearse your desired guitar part before you record it. Be aware of the tempo, feel, and how many bars your initial loop will occupy. This is the foundation for any additional layers and is key to building a solid pocket for further orchestration. Play your guitar part and tap your foot in time with the music near the record function switch. This gets you ready to capture your guitar parts. So many guys get frustrated with the looper because they find it hard to play and execute their parts with good timing. I'd advocate recording a scratch rhythm track into the looper for the desired loop length first. The scratch rhythm will be an excellent guide for your first guitar part and help you practice your in and out points without having to play the guitar part too. Watch carefully as I execute the scratch guide track. Now that we have a rhythm guide at tempo, at the correct length, with clean in and out points, we can add the first guitar part. Mm -hmm. 
Now that we have all of that running smoothly, we can add overdubs or simply solo over the top of the loop. Check out my intro to this video to see the whole process in action. And remember, you can choose to exit recording for each part and keep playback going to practice additional parts before recording them. Or if you keep quiet, you can keep the record process going and add parts on the fly, like my intro demonstration. I hope these tips will help you get the most out of your Helix Looper. It really is the perfect practice partner. In the next video, I'll be guiding you through the overdub process for looping rhythm guitar parts and giving you some cool ideas on how to create those juicy layered flavors using upper chord voicings, arpeggios, and single note rhythms. See you then.